Is an elder not entitled to the sweat of his bro? No says the elder in the Exodite worlds. It belongs to the land. No says the Harlequin. It belongs to Segarach. No says the elder in the craft world. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose Kamorag, a city where the artist would not fear the censor, where the homunculus would not be bound by petty morality, where the Arkan would not be constrained by the slave and with the sweat of your bro. Kamorag can become your city as well. Andrew Ryanus drew Bielvect on Kamorag if the galaxy was a giant rundown town. Kamorag would be the local nightclub turned insane asylum. Big E making his opinion on the city clear Kamorag is the main realm. There really is no better word for it. Of the Dark Elder. It sits at the heart of the webway. Games Workshop named them after the mafiaous Kamora clans of Naples and the scriptural city Gamora. Other influences are the Mos Eisley spaceboat. Though Kamorag makes Mos Eisley look like an Amish community. Port Royal. Big Hero Singapore. And, since Elf. Irel Hari Sinlu and Menza Baranzan. If there is one place in the galaxy you don't want to end up in, except Demon Worlds and New Jersey, it's Kamorag. Sounding like something that would be named by a monkey. It started out during the days of the Elder Empire as a bunch of private realms where bored Elder could do perverse things in privacy, or in large groups, if that floated their boats. These realms' relative isolation from reality partially shielded those within from the birth of Slanesh, preventing them from being outright sucked into the war, though they quickly realized that they were still in danger as their souls began to erode from within their bodies. Then, they discovered that causing pain to other creatures allowed them to top up their souls and stay youthful and energetic. These realms slowly coalesced as their occupants found common purpose in raiding real space for victims, and then bringing them home to torture them. Eventually, some of these raiders banded together under the banners of the old noble houses, and the alliances and mergers brought about the dark city we all know and love. Because Dark Elder have no need for foolish things like supports or foundations. Structures get built at all sorts of crazy angles, which makes things that much more entertaining for the residents. From jet bike races among the rooftops to gladiatorial challenges in the arenas to the therapist's office, Kamorag has it all despite it being hidden in the webway and being crazy heavily defended Kamorag has been invaded multiple times, often by orcs, one time by space marines, salamanders and their successors, fittingly, or chaos space marines, death guard of all people but mostly by demons. Almost all of these invasions were engineered by the Dark Elder themselves to deal with their rivals in the ensuing chaos of battle. Denizens don't even consider these incidents threatening anymore. If anything your average Kabbalite sees it as an upgraded version of a real space raid. You get the joy of the hunt without leaving the dark city and subjecting yourself to a withering influence of materium sucking half of the energy you take from torturing your quarry and you can backstab your competitors, superiors or aspiring underlings as there's no real space raid truce to stop you. Sure, some would die in the fighting, but most invaders don't have body annihilating weapons, so the neighborhood homunculus can fire up a resurrection chamber and regenerate you from little more than a phalanx digit in their back alley shop of horrors. Anyone who gets accidentally vaporized by friendly dark light fire certainly deserves to stay dead for not watching their back. Despite probably having one of the smallest populations for a faction in the galaxy, the fact that they are all in one place makes any attack a supremely risky proposition. However, in at least three instances the forces of the Imperium have displayed that they can locate, enter and exit Kamorag, with both the Death Watch and Space Wolves having done so and the forces of the Forge World Stages also having marched an army right into the city before. While Imperium does have a lot of horrific planet destroying weapons, marching into a Kamorag and blowing one likely won't work. The Dark City is actually not one place, but thousands of webway nodes connected through instant travel portals. So any WMD powerful enough would at best only destroy one district and make already dreadful Kamorag traffic a bit worse. 
as some other districts would have to redirect routes that led through destroyed districts. Considering Dark Elder often destroy each other's districts in their multiple internal conflicts, Imperium blowing up some wouldn't even register. The history of the Dark City Camorag's history begins with the rise of the Elder Empire. An interstellar nation which straddled the galaxy for countless millennia and was the dominant force in the galaxy until the fall which saw their almost total collapse. One of the key advantages which allowed the Elder Empire to grow so powerful was their ability to use the webway, a form of FTL travel left to them by their creators the old ones. The webway was the principal mode of transportation for the elder during the tenure of their empire and, as a result, numerous port cities were constructed within it. Greatest of these was the city of Camorag itself. However, when the spiritual malaise and decay that would doom their species set in, places like Camorag were not exempt, with the inhabitants becoming cruel and capricious creatures, seeking ever more decadent and often violent forms of self-gratification. When the fall occurred and Slanish was birthed into the galaxy in an orgy of, well just about everything, the Elder Empire practically ceased overnight, with countless Elders simply falling dead. The Elder within the webway, however, were shielded from this effect. Although Slanish had purchase on their souls, the young god could not simply extract it at will instead slowly draining the soul away. As a result the webway, like the craft worlds, Sigarach or the world spirits of the Exodites, became a form of refuge for the surviving elder. Camorag, as the greatest of their webway port cities, became a hub for surviving elder to gather and exist in relative safety. Unlike their craft world, Exodite and Harlequin cousins, however, the elder of Camorag chose not to give up their old ways, even though it had now literally damned their souls to an eternity of torment. Instead they devised a method by which they could sustain and feed themselves off the misery and suffering of others, ensuring they could live and escape Slanesh as long as they could get access to adequate amounts of pain. Sort of like Garmin Boja. Indeed the Dark Elder are, effectively, Pain Vampires. In the initial history of Camorag it was ruled by dynastic noble families and clans, feuding with each other, and leaving it a rather anarchic place. Their rule was, however, eventually overturned by a former slave known as Asdrubial Vector who was smart enough to realize that there wasn't anything that couldn't be solved by a space marine and, so, managed to lure the heads of the major noble families into fights with some salamander chapter space marines which saw them all promptly killed. In the aftermath Astrobiel took over and instituted a new system based off cabals, and became the top authority within the Dark City. Of note the term Dark Elder only came to be used by the inhabitants of Camorag to describe themselves following Astrobiel's rise to power. During the Great Crusade the Dark Elder were not heard from much, it continued to be the sadistic freaks that we know and loathe today, but with one new addition to their gruesome to-do list. In order to hold off Slanish from devouring their souls they needed slaves, lot of them, to take their place. The Dark Elder proceeded to launch raids across the galaxy where they plundered countless defenseless worlds including Vulcan's adopted home world which certainly didn't help to convince the Imperium to drop its xenophobic views. In the aftermath of the Great Crusade the Dark Elder were involved in one incident. It is believed that the Primarch of the White Scars went missing pursuing Dark Elder into the webway. What exactly happened is unknown though, but it is unlikely he ever was taken to Camorag or found by any of the leadership of the Dark City as the Dark Elder would most likely all be dead in that case. After the Horus Heresy the next major event to occur to the Dark City was when the Champion of Slanesh. Lucius the Eternal was briefly detained along with Fabius Bile within an outer satellite of Camorag. The capture was revealed to be a ruse, however, by the Emperor's children who proceeded to release demons to feast upon the souls of the Dark Elder present. It was noted as being the largest single loss of Elder life in ages, with the demons of Slanesh so overjoyed that the entire Dark City was briefly cowed from action as they looked to their own defenses. Turns out that trying to outsmart a demigod like being doesn't work so good. Despite these incidents the reign of Astrobiel Vect only saw one serious challenge. From the domain of Shardom, a powerful holdout of the former nobility. Although they proved a worthy adversary for a while the master of the Dark City eventually doomed the domain to a demon infestation. 
removing that threat. Although the leader of Shardom was briefly restored to life by descendants of the nobility and plunged Kamorak into war, this threat too was halted eventually at great cost. Only much later would another, more serious competitor for power emerge in the form of a jilted former consort of his, Lady Males. Lady Males became a powerful Arkan with connections to the Harlequins, who seemed set to guide her on a path perhaps connected to the Innery as they helped bring Evrain, future Herald of Inner to her attention. For a while the Dark City began to devolve into tension from the rising enmity between Lady Males and Astrobiel as well as the ominous collapsing of the defenses around a part of Kamorag named Kane's Gate. Amusingly, the Dark Elder took inspiration from the Golden Throne on Terra and attempted to construct an Azot's Black Throne at Kane's Gate, using their own tech to create the machine and attempting to acquire some of the Emperor's genetic material to create a psychic battery to power it. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedgear.co.uk. One stop shop for Coom Jar models. However, we do sell a lot more than just smart models, we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact, we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing, we also have some role playing adventures and DD 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Fracture of Bealtan of late Kamorag has been rather turbulent. The emergence of Evrain as the Herald of Inad saw the largest disjunction in Kamorag's history. The infamous Cain's Gate tearing open and allowing a veritable flood of demons to begin overwhelming the city. Although Vect had put countermeasures in place, and the Cabals did attempt to counterattack, these did little to stop the invasion. With the demons continuously gaining ground and feasting on the souls of the slain Dark Elder. Indeed the situation became so grim that many Dark Elder began to talk openly of overthrowing Vect for allowing such an event to occur in the first place. Actually when you think about it it couldn't have been that bad considering they had the luxury of plotting a coup over the dinner table rather than being more worried about being gutted by a demon and sent on the express route to their creepy stalker goddess. Certainly the Dark Elder Elder did not help themselves by continuing to fight against each other and by dispatching some of their own even in such a dire time to chase down and slay the Innery. However, just as things began to look truly dire for the home of the Dark Elder two things occurred. First the famed decapitator of the Mandrakes completed his ritual, causing the Dark Dimension to flood out into Kamorag proper and a tidal wave of Mandrakes to counterattack the demons. And secondly the Hemonkili decided the threat was at last dire enough that they opened up their abattoirs and released their most deranged and fearsome of beasts. Combined, these two attacks finally quelled the demon invasion, saving Kamorag from destruction. In the aftermath, though, the status quo had shifted. The city is damaged like never before. Astrobiel Vect's position is now shakier than ever and the effects of the Manrake's dimension intruding on Kamorag is not yet fully known. Law and order yes, there are laws in this godforsaken place. Like all the laws, it is something that stops the society itself from collapsing. For a society that runs on debauchery, piracy and slavery however, this is no exception. The laws are, do not bring sickers, unless they are a shadow seer or use any sicker power. This one in general has to do with the frigging gates of Cain which block demons from entering the city, as well as not letting Slanesh itself sense their presence and follow it to the city. Obey Vect. He is the top dog of the city. If he tells you to jump, you jump. If he tells you to go on a death match in the arena, you do it. It's not like the Hemonkili won't patch you up afterwards. Obey the cabals. Unless doing so involves disobeying Vect. Even then one may still suffer for disobeying the cabals. That's pretty much it. However, since there's no police force in Kamorag, the city has a lot of personal freedom where you can murder people whenever you want. Stealing shit and play grimdark cyberpunk grand theft auto. However, 
Killing the wrong or important people like a member of a cabal or a homunculus can grant yourself an instant death sentence. Note, the actual dying part of that probably won't be instant. Where instead of people watching you get publicly execute, you will find a mob of fully armed comrades on your ass. The same goes to messing with the fighting arena. Dark Elder need their entertainment. Hemonculi. Dark Elder needs their healing and resurrection. And scourges. Dark Elder need their communication relays. non comrades without the protection of a cabal such as Corsairs and Exiles tend to limit their adventuring to the ports and markets which are merely seedy and dangerous. Only the Harlequins enjoy the street cred to wander the dark city at will without being regarded as prey, and only because of their own deserved reputation for gratuitous violence. The religious situation in the dark city has been complex, given their tendency towards selfish hedonism. Comrades tend to play fast and loose with religion as a whole, with secularism as the main order of the day. Many in Camorag outright dismiss religion and gods altogether for their own selfish desires. After the fall of the Elder, Slanesh nommed all the Elder Gods save Cain, Sigarach and Isha. Coupled with their toxic culture, social Darwinist tendencies and selfishness, many decided to just abandon religion altogether. Although atheism was never officially enforced it was encouraged. This is commemorated in universe with Iconoclast Mound, a mountainous landfill of various religious icons from all different races, beginning with elder religious icons when the Comorites threw away their own beliefs. Later they learned that Cain, Isha and Segarach survived. Some dark elder do revere Cain and some occasionally join the ranks of the Harlequins. But most Dark Elder are either non-religious or atheistic. Vect himself has some syncretized views on religion and Camorag. He is a self-serving, as our frenemies at DV Trope say, nathist, meaning he believes gods exist but refuses to worship or follow them. Is dismissive of religiosity in all its forms unless he finds an adherent useful to him, unless they serve chaos, and brushed off in it as a myth until in it awakened his power in Ivrain while in Camorag. Whereupon Vect's view on anything in it changed from it's a worthless myth to destroy it all. As of the gathering storm, Ivrain's sudden awakening to Inard's blessed power has broken one of the above law to not use any sicker power. As a result, demons poured in and Vect had to deal with this shit himself. Welp surprisingly, he failed and now Kamorag is more chaotic than before. Riots everywhere with Dark Elder joining either Lady Males or Vect for more misunderstood in fighting. So yeah. Order for the sake of disorder. Ironic how a tour guide of Camorag if you're not a Dark Elder, Holoquin, or a badass mercenary. Camorag can be difficult to get around in. It's a city that destroys the weak, torments the slow, and kills the stupid. Of course, all the previous three will die. It just varies on how and when. Despite popular theory, non-elder can prosper in Camorag. Since there are several parts where aliens live in towns and the most fearsome can be recruited into Dark Elder Cabals. In particular, it's not unknown for orcs to be wildly successful in the fighting rings only to give their masters a good crumping and go free agent. A list of tips for newcomers. Head to the district called Null City and become a badass alien mercenary. Humans are aliens the Dark Elder. Don't fuck with Astrubial Vect. Otherwise, you were most likely brought back so Dark Elder could feed off your pain so Slanesh won't eat their souls sacrificed to Slanesh in their place. You may have been brought back to be a human. Monkeley's guinea pig, snack, pet, a diversion so they won't get bored, which still involves unspeakable torture, or all of the above. You may be sent to the gladiator arenas of Kimorag to fight for your life against witches, dangerous beasts ranging from razzle wing flocks to captured carnifexes, or both at the same time. This will last until you die. You can be killed simply for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or even if you went where you're supposed to go. If you're a slave, your expendable currency if you stare at scourges for too long, they will fly down. Pick you up and impale you on a spire. Don't feed the scourges, they're not pigeons. If you do expect things to end up like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds there's no night or day, just the dull. Baleful glow of stolen stars. It also has many areas where light never reaches. 
Dark Elder adapted by developing natural night vision. In the shadows you can encounter mandrakes who will kill and or eat you. The unnatural geometry of Kimura can be extremely disorienting for visitors. That banging noise near Kane's gate isn't Scarbrand and his demonic hordes. See if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device. It's absolutely nothing at all. Nothing at all Kimura could be called a tourist trap in the most literal sense of the word. As anyone who tours Kimorak will end up trapped in an arena or homunculus lab and end up as a meat puppet for some demented homunculus who thinks you'd look better with snake skin and swords for arms and legs Kimorak has free health care. Just see DR homunculus for the slightest cough. Revo jet bikes and hellions hate each other and they hate you. While it's likely that the Reavers would run you down for fun. The Hellions aren't so sadistic. They'd give you a head start first if you're being chased by one group of flyers. Flee towards more flyers and then escape in the ensuing air battle. Don't go out alone. Unless you're stupid powerful. In which case going alone is always the best choice. Basically you have to balance being threatening enough to deter casual interest. Without looking like you're out to fight a small war. Because someone will take you up on it.